Okay, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alfonso Diambo, and um, I work with Tunapanda Institute, uh, where I actively um, I'm actively involved in uh, Tunapanda Net Community Network as the lead technical engineer. Um, I joined in the year 2019 as an intern and um, over then we have grown all together and uh, now I'm celebrating my third year uh, in Tunapandanet. So today I'm very happy and pleased to be part of this call and also just to be um, uh, able to share with you much about the community network and my experience um, having worked uh, for now this is my third year and um, I, I really think um, I don't have like um, I cannot say I'm the master of information in this area but I what I can uh, attest to is that I have seen it grown on my hands so it is like a child who has been brought forth um, or brought up in my hands and I've really seen different things I've seen different uh, um, challenges that we've gone through, areas of growth and potential things that we can still explore. So allow me today to um, introduce what Tunapanda is and then uh, I will go uh, straight into the content and see exactly what Community Networks is and how has been the journey in Kenya and even outside Kenya and how uh, where are we going as Community Networks. So without taking my time, uh, uh, Tunapanda Net Community Network is uh, located in Kibara and uh, our main focus is um, to bridge the digital divide through connecting the unconnected. Uh, as we continue we realize that uh, it is not just a matter of um, uh, giving internet or connecting the unconnected but now when we bridge the, uh, bring in two aspects like bridging the digital divide and also connecting the connected then it comes to a sense a sensible a manner uh, that we might say okay now uh, we are providing a solution yes so tunapandanet is a community network which is in Nairobi Kenya as I said before and it was born in 90, uh, 2015 and uh, it was co-founded by uh, Josephine Melissa Joe Larson and Mike were the, the founders and it began as a small idea of localizing the content um, and making them available in the local community and this followed an aspect of internet in a box um, um, the aim of the uh, project was putting together learning resources for students in a more central area or central storage and this was uh, informed by the fact that communi uh, the community around Kibera uh, are facing a lot of challenges with regards to um, how they uh, access these services. It can be educational services, health services, housing services and ETC. So one of the things that we saw as uh, of high importance is how people um, uh, get and uh, utilize information which I think um, uh, this is where we can have like the pivot of changing the dynamics of a livelihood of a community. So uh, Tunapana Net, um, being that it is located in Kibera, which is um, uh, regarded as um, uh, of low living standard, uh, including education, and access to education, health, and other necessary resources is also a challenge, then uh, Tunapanda Net is uh, bringing like affordable and meaningful access to unconnected segment of the community of Kibera and just to allow them to access uh, equal digital opportunities and this is where I think every one of us is now looking into how we can uh, access uh, meaningful uh, content and resources. Yeah, so um, looking back in 2015 when Tunapanda Net was born uh, definitely I was not there but I have the story. Uh, Tunapandanet began by just like uh, any other uh, organization defining the objectives and uh, identifying the communities that will be engaging. And uh, we ended up defining core values and tasks and timeframes and formats of community engagement 
because this was one of the most uh, new concept in the community and uh, getting people buy in was not such an easy thing so it took some time to uh, get it uh, into the community and uh, engage and find partners and such so by 2018 to 2017 that is when we do the first uh, pilot and uh, this was supported by internet society where i also serve as the vice president and uh, we managed to connect three uh, schools we developed some few infrastructure including data centers and did a lot of feasibility studies and performed review and improvements uh, the learnings that uh, came out in the 2016-2017 also informed um, like our next journey and we changed a lot, a lot of things and this is now when I joined in the year 2018 and uh, I learned the process and also quickly uh, changed a number of processes and I thank uh, my uh, mentor and my lead uh, Josephine Melissa for having given me the opportunity to also exhibit and uh, exercise um, I, my leadership and my management capability in running this project so we managed to connect uh, expand to around 36 uh, centers including schools including uh, community-based organizations including um, health organizations and such so i i grew up uh, kind of uh, leaning off from just being a network engineer and just deploying and uh, de designing a network to also becoming a community social engineer because um, i began to understand that this network would really not move if we put community aside so uh, matter, as a matter of fact um, by the end by around 2019 we saw a very minus growth and um, we had connected around 36 uh, community uh, centers and groups and that was cutting across 13 community uh, villages in Kibera out of 17 so i think that was a good growth so uh, our main aim is to also bring any uh, the remaining uh, villages uh, into connectivity and then we also focused on network automation scoping and that is when now uh, we started to think about now the network is growing and management is becoming a bit uh, uh, difficult so we had to think around uh, things around uh, uh, billing, ticketing, CRM, like managing the expectations and such and later on we got into this content uh, and curriculum development for community networks because this is an area which is focusing on uh, content creation and all that so um, as other community networks uh, our main core areas of practice is around the community in community networks this is involves like mobilizing engagement and connectivity issues because um, one of the characteristics that we learn f um, uh, going forward is that uh, community networks uh, put uh, community in the forefront in everything that they are doing and then there was organizational capacity system and processes uh, where we just um, uh, help in forming or supporting the capacities uh, trainings and such and the network infrastructure and services where deployment management scaling uh, replication and all that uh, social entrepreneurship and financial management for community policy regulations participation um, we, we took part in the a call for uh, participation during the formulation of uh, community network lessons framework uh, which is now out and then the sustainability thinking, uh, thinking about um, economic environmental and social sustainability of community networks and uh, local content creation storage and dissemination uh, of those relevant content uh, to the community yeah, so um, I think having understood or gone through that, I think most of you are now like because uh, as this equally, even me when I, I got into Tunapanda, this word community network was a bit kind of uh, so uh, unique and new to me. 
but what I got was uh, hard to, to like do connectivity, design a network, and um, yeah. So later on, I've um, been trying and uh, looking into different, I've uh, been uh, different community networks, uh, concepts, and everything. Those who are in practice and such. But uh, we have very many definitions for community networks, and uh, I think uh, I've, I just sampled some of them. One is a uh, definition by Internet Society that it is hap it happens when people come together and build and maintain the necessary infrastructure for internet connection by people uh, for the people. So this really just have its definition around the internet infrastructure because you know um, internet society's main goals or objectives is just to uh, build strengthen and promote internet so uh, I think that is why the, the, the definition is uh, centralized to infrastructure for connection now the one in green is a bit uh, more uh, uh, very important for me because this is now uh, what really uh, like brings sense to me. I, I don't say like the others are not sensible, but this is now what uh, I can say meets my definition. And uh, I define it a bit uh, awkward and very long uh, because a community network to me is a computer-based system that is intended to help support. Uh, the word here is support. And usually we support a geographically uh, located communities by supporting, augmenting, and extending like already existing social networks. So, whenever we talk about uh, community networks, we have to bring back into our minds do we have already existing social networks by using networking technologies by, with, and for a community. So, by mean we have to involve the community, with we must use uh, work with community, and for it must be particularly for um, supporting the community and the other way we can uh, also define it is uh, like information infrastructure services or applications and content to support uh, the activities of a community usually implies support for a geolocated and pre-existing uh, community rather than a purely internet-based community as in um, online community or network community so if you look at these conversations or these definitions, they all come to us to settle in a point that there is a social network that is a very key to consider. So what makes a community networks unique? Because um, already for us to connect the unconnected, people can use different technologies, people can use different methods and business models. But now why community networks? So we have noticed that uh, community networks aggregate uh, very wide and uh, variety of information and communication services in a central though like kind of virtual location uh, which is becoming um, an effect of a non-profit um, aspect of it and uh, community networks is general purpose and we strive to support the six uh, community core values and these are defined by someone called Douglas Schuller uh, but in 1996 as conviviality, culture, education, strong democracy, health, well-being, economic equity, opportunity and sustainability. So if you look at the, 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 the core things that we, um, the community core values uh, uh, that uh, are highlighted by Douglas Scholar in his 1996 paper is that uh, communities need things that plug in into their already existing practices and uh, they need not to uh, such technologies or such things need not to uh, adversely alter or affect the way community networks uh, like the, the way communities behave or um, perform their daily duties so um, while thinking about community networks you also have to do uh, community social engineering to understand exactly what community needs how they need it when they need it and uh, actually how they can participate in the uh, eventuality of the project so that brings the idea that community needs to be participating in every part of community network 
and they are the first core uh, stakeholders in this um, kind of uh, project. So, uh, in addition to performing uh, technical duties related to running networked computer for a light community, community network developers typically engage in a wide range of other related activities, including training, social activism, entrepreneurship, and advocacy. So, unlike other um, ISPs or internet service providers that are for corporate and for business, um, community networks goes beyond because this is what now interface uh, the the whole world with uh, with the individuals. So what happens, uh, for example, if you go to Kakamega community, there is now Kakamega county. In that county, there is a sub county, and then you will go until you reach a family level and now you get to understand in this family what actually can they uh, do they need and how do they uh, like attach the technology to their uh, their daily lifestyle and how much time do they spend online how many how much time do they spend at home like you have if if it costs that you take the internet where they spend most of their time if, if it is in farms then that is where you need it so for this case, you just don't need to drop a cable, you drop a connection and you say, no, we have connected the unconnected. No, that is not a community network. A community network aims to uh, target exactly uh, the areas of pain that communities are, are experiencing and just try to uh, involve the community in tailoring or coming up with the tailored uh, solutions that they understand and they can sustain. Yeah, so um, for that case, we get to a point where we, okay, we just need to understand the pillars of community networks. And for this case, community comes first in the list uh, because this is like the core of the, of the community network. It forms the basic stakeholder that you must involve. And then there, is, there comes infrastructure. Once you have the processes, you have the info, you have the services, then you just need a way because uh, uh, a way to like distribute what you have, to provide a platform, to connect people, uh, to provide information, uh, to disseminate uh, that information and event to store. So that is all about infrastructure. And I personally normally say that as I learned uh, networking in school is a bit different as it is now and how even I apply it because at network in school we say internet is an interconnection of uh, networks or uh, connection of many networks but we fail to um, identify the aspect that networks without a user is just a dummy infrastructure so for me nowadays network is a network or an internet is an interconnection of computers in sub and services that are that are being consumed that are or consumable by users so users is very important and in this case our users are the communities uh, that we serve and then we have stakeholders the external stakeholders this can be government entities uh, regulatory bodies students researchers standardization organizations like IEEE in this case ITU uh, Internet Society ISO so those are very important to bring on board because uh, we also in the uh, in the route of um, identifying solutions that are not too technical are not too um, expensive to deploy, maintain, and to run. So it is very important that we, we take care of uh, the technologies that we use. Then we have the services, which must be, the word here must be meaningful. Um, you can provide anything, but remember what is meaningful in uh, Meru could not be meaningful in, uh, in Kisumu. Because Meru, the main uh, activity is maybe tea and, and Mira. And uh, Kisumu, it is fish. So what the meaningful information for Kisumu guys, maybe they need to know how they can harvest fish, that they can process fish, they can market their fish, the things around uh, aquaculture. And then uh, Meru guys is things around tea, diseases and all that, anything that around surrounded in the green farming so it is very important that you identify these local services and for you to know such local services there are people that we normally call the indigenous groups and these are people who have stayed in a community for quite a long and they understand the long uh, 
uh, the stories of the community and how they transitions from like uh, generation to generation, generation, generation to generation, and things that they have uh, actually dropped off, and things that they have acquired, and how people have been trying to um, or transfer heritage and uh, social lifestyle from time to time. So for that, they will also even advise you that please do not try this, or if you have to try this here, then look for a method. Uh, you can use this way and this way and this way, so that. They give you like the pathway to involve or to uh, provide a solution. And then there are uh, the part of policy and regulations. Uh, this is where community networks um, uh, need to like, like other ISPs. We also need to be licensed and also to work within the regulatory, regulatory frameworks that are provided by Kenya, uh, Communications Authority of Kenya and ICTA. Okay, now um, basing our understanding on uh, community networks, we also need like to think about what are the characteristics. When we think of a community networks, why do we say it is a community network and not a, a sorry a corporate network? So, a community network must be community owned and championed, meaning a part of it must be or a big chunk of it must be run and owned and operated by the community themselves. It should be simple, robust in this design and uh, it must be re replicable and scalable and it must be using, if not all, but open source and flow system. Um, now, as we think about community networks, now how can we, the big question here is where can we plug in uh, our community networks? Now, now, now that we have identified community, now which areas can we really tap into? When you think about a community, so the first area is in health and wellness, uh, where we can target uh, uh, health centers, uh, clinics, and everything. There is educational and digital literacy. Train the community. In fact, this is very critical because not everyone who is using Android phone is uh, literate. Or <laughs> now to use that phone, so you just need. Uh, there are people who will even have the phone. The, the phone is touch, very powerful phone, but they can't even open up a Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, so that is that is part of the digital literacy that you have to train them on how to use that. So nowadays, digital literacy is not how or whether you can use, but can you use the digital tools or platforms or services in a way that they sustain or they make your life more better and easy uh in that regard so it is very important that when you deploy these networks you also make sure that you uh, train these people on how to use uh, these uh, digital tools or things that you're bringing on board um there is the agricultural tech uh, agri tech the agricultural sector where you can use uh, iot uh, because community networks is open for everything. You can use an internet of things to detect diseases, to detect everything. A farmer will be more happy to reduce the number of times they go to visit their their farms, whether there is an outbreak of disease or signs of diseases. When you can be in a position to provide, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a solution that will uh, actually monitor whether, whether there is an uh, attack, disease attack, or something like uh, uh, yellowing of the leaves of, 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 of plantations, and then it sends alerts to the farmer, so or just automatically um, spray some medicine or some water, open up taps. So such as those are solutions that are still pending, and the community networks is able to tap into. A fintech and business, this is very important. How do people market their products? How do communities uh, uh, reach out to the bigger market? How do they uh, come up with uh, uh, small business inform uh, uh, ideas? And how can they use internet to uh, boost their business? And then the, there is in access to the internet, which is obvious. Uh, people need to get access and, and, and all that. And then there is policy and advocacy. Still, you can play a very vital role as, uh, as someone who is just there to advocate for internet for everyone, 
uh, of late there is the, uh, the, the discussions a lot of splinternet how what can you say about it what's your role what's your part as someone who understands that people need information and not just informa uh, information but relevant accurate and timely information so uh, these are things that are very important when consider when thinking about community networks and now uh, that people might ask as far as now uh, when we think about community is does it have um, like some kind of serious or, or uh, uh, devices that are set aside for only community networks no uh, as other ISPs community network can take different form um, but now the key thing must be how sustainable it is how cheap and simple uh, because we don't want to uh, deploy something that will only take two years and then it is be it becomes more expensive uh, again for the community uh, that they cannot sustain anymore so we need things that are very simple easy and scalable at the same time very uh, uh, sustainable in future so uh, community networks use mostly 80 percent of them I've seen um, in Kenya and even beyond Kenya is wireless technologies they're uh, using the Wi-Fi um, technologies and uh, majority of them use the radio it could be ubiquity devices it could be microtech it could be cambium it could be uh, what do you call it uh, uh, the RF elements like anything that uh, it does and then there is the emerging uh, uh, an emerging technology which we call TV white spaces uh, which has been tested by Mawingu in Kenya and also currently being tested and run in uh, Kondoa community networks in Tanzania where I happened to be um, a visitor I went to see uh, what they do it's an amazing technology though has both odds and, and and pros so there is also the fiber optics technology which is um now i can say around 20 percent because of its uh, uh high initial capital and uh, it also require more uh, ex uh, a bit experts uh, in that regard and uh, for sure fiber to fttx which is fiber to homes or fiber to premise has been uh, used in uh, as mr said in uh, many uh, not very many but uh, in other co other countries like gifinet has done that and dobe in uh, internet has also done that in in us so uh these are areas that uh, we can also still think through uh, how we can make fiber a cheaper technology to use for community networks and um, this now calls upon uh, everyone in the industry to make it um, feasible for community networks. Um, community networks in Kenya has very has grown, uh, and currently we are eight, we are eight in number, and we are still encouraging and um, supporting very many other people who wants to come up with their community networks to to start as early as now, so that uh, we help in bridging. The digital divide and connecting the unconnected i think even during the, um, the report given by uh, iebc uh, of kenya uh, electoral body in kenya shows that there is still a big percentage of the communities or, or, or parts of kenya that are still not within the 3g 4g coverage and that will really mean that it is too low like can you imagine if the 3g a GSM coverage is that low and uh, what's about like the broadband or uh, uh, the, the internet itself so it's very important that we we think up through our solutions and see which communities we are coming from and if such solutions can be offered so we have to Napana net which is uh, I think is the eldest then we have a, co a hairy community network in Kisumu Dunia Moja in Kilifi at the community network in Meru, uh, Action Blood Progress in Kakuma Refugee, uh, Wasis Madari Nairobi, Ma a Red Lands Information Network, Alin in Yahururu, Nyandarua, and then Lanet Moja in Nakuru. So we are still encouraging more. So uh, 
now what what do we need to say after this like um at the end of it we are calling upon other people or the participants to at least come up with innovations and the inventions that can help community networks to be more sustainable more reliable and more long lasting and this will call for researchers um, uh, students uh, the engineers to come together and come up with the solutions and then we have partnerships and collaborations um, these community networks need people group organization alliances and other communities and universities to join hands together to make sure that we bridge the digital divide because this is not a one-man uh, project it is a, co a community project that really need support from different aspects of uh, industries uh, so that people can come together we can support uh, you can come as a funder, as a supporter, as a volunteer, as an advocacy, uh, advocate and everything that you um, you might think because this is not a network. This is a community uh, network which involves around many things, even including the human rights defenders needs to be here. Um, then we have government agencies because this is where um, policies and regulations and governing, protecting and promoting growth of community network is very important. Uh, tax assessment and tax exempt, low fees, capacity building and funding, even through the universal service funds. It's very important because um, uh, these are things that uh, community network is not out there to make profit. We are out there to support communities realize their potential and come up with the solutions that they think are simple, uh, easy to maintain and sustainable in future and can also reflect in their daily lives as a way of reducing the bulk that we really have. So for us to meet these things, we, also, we can't really compete at the level of ISPs, like for example, the big telcos. Uh, we cannot pay billions of money to sustain a link. We cannot pay those millions of money to sustain a, a a task for or, or a tax for our fees for for spectrum you know but we can also not come up with our own devices but if yeah if the role uh, the relations and the policies are favorable enough then we can be able to support the growth and the, the performance of community networks in in kenya so i would want to bring at uh, like just to call upon um different uh, people, different uh, group, respective of what area you perform in, these things are touching our people. And it is not community, it is your family, it is your friend, it is your mother, your father, and your brothers that you are targeting. Um, now, like, I just wanted like to show you a simple architecture that Tunapanda Net has um, uh, adopted. Uh, where we have at our ISP of Kenet, Kenya Educational Network, uh, Educational Network, and we have uh, the core layer, we have data centers, and then dis distribution layer, access layer, uh, services, and then users. So uh, it's just a typical diagram, but it shows how the information and how this infrastructure. We we tend to make it very simple so that. At the end of it, it is something that can be used by any other community network, irrespective of the geographical the, uh, this, uh, nature and all that, but they can still use the same design with a few tweaks just to deploy without a lot of going through the hard learning paths that we went through. So as to Napandanet, we are not only now giving internet, but we are also creating processes and procedures that can help other community networks to start and jump start very fast without going through the long path of learning that we went through. So we tend and try to document every point or every aspect of our activities or processes in a way that they are very easy to uh, follow and uh, replicate. So we are not uh, self-centered but our interest is to see the emergence of other many community networks like Stunapandanet in any part of the country and beyond. So uh, this, uh, there are gaps that are still experienced by Tunapandanet and by the community networks across. 
because most of the time this uh, community network people start them at a point of uh, like a, in the mindset of a small thing but with the time on with the demand in the community the networks grow very fast and then they, they come with a lot of complexity one of the complexity is around IP management and advanced routing because you might start it as a repeated or a bridge network but there is a time it will force you to get into a routed network and when it comes to routed network then we have to also think about the internet exchange point for community networks themselves because I think this is an idea that will also help us to uh, reduce the cost of uh, routing information because I believe that when information is closer uh, to the user we tend to reduce the cost of infrastructure the cost of uh, uh, information distribution and like if you think about the local content that has been maybe hosted in a server and you are in an intranet how long and how fast and how efficient is it so I think by us having our exchange points at some particular point this will also be a, a great solution for us as community network experts or practitioners to uh, reduce the ultimate cost that had been uh, or could have been uh, extended to us by ISPs, uh, other ISPs or, or uh, ISPs. And um, I think this will also just bring the sense of peering and working as a group in, in terms of community networks. And uh, there is also uh, the issue of infrastructure and power backup plans for nodes. You know, as you, you, you tend to extend, electricity is a challenge in these communities that we work with. There are areas that even uh, uh, the national grid is not yet a reality and still you need to serve those people with the internet. So what can we do? We need to go to solar, we need to go to other backup plants. You cannot run a generator for a node, so it will require that we, run, we go for other alternative ways of friendly uh, 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 power backups or power plants. Things like solar, windmills and any other thing that might be available and then there is regulatory frameworks um, I think because 80% uh, of community networks around the world even in Kenya in, in particular we all use the, um, uh, the free ISM bands that is the 5.0 and 2.4 spectrums which are already uh, um, uh, uh, congested is prone to interference and everyone is just there so I think it is high time that community networks also should have their own uh, assigned spectrum uh, let's say a 90 gigahertz or gigahertz or 60 gigahertz where we can operate without a lot of interference as it is in uh, as, 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 as uh, we talk now so these are things that ultimately at the end of it when the government realizes that this is a thing that we can give high priority, then it really makes sense that um, we can be in a position to uh, build sustainable, sustainable um, information or sustainable things, sustainable networks that communities can rely on. And then we have the operational challenges uh, or gaps that are there. As, as I indicated earlier, these, things, these networks are growing and sometimes they grow very fast until we forget the, the network uh, monitoring and management aspect of it. And now you, you, we, we end up into uh, a state of dilemma. Uh, what do we do? Because the network has grown, people need to be managed, uh, traffic need to be shaped. And so for that part, uh, we really need to think about uh, what monitoring tools are we using? Uh, are we in the capacity to pay for uh, vendor uh, like uh, proprietor uh, solutions? Uh, they, I know there is planes, there are very many things, but can, but can we afford? Because our ultimate goal is to reduce cost for the community. Now, if we add cost on the network, then we need to extend this cost to the community. So, I think community network team uh, or practitioners in partnership with others should come up with uh, uh, solutions that are open source and uh, can be used to uh, support the management of the networks and this can also be challenged to uh, universities who are doing software and, and uh, technology or embedded systems to come up with solutions that can monitor or can make the work more easier you 
from in fact from deployment to from survey to deployment to maintenance and all that so that at least we have uh, a full set of in uh, of uh, solutions for even the network net uh, operation center team and then there's the billing and the crm uh, invoicing ticketing asset management it is very important because as the network grows we need to track every device and every uh, activity and then access local content versus data uh, i think um, of late we have noted that data is very important part of uh, community networks because whenever we get into the communities what we collect is data and now this comes in with a number of things that uh, one thing which is more key it makes us become a network uh, rather data uh, DPOs, data protection officers or that uh, so so long as we become the DPOs then it means that we have to adhere to the uh, data protection act of 2019 that uh, we handle data with a lot of care and a lot of seriousness so it really means that whenever we go to the community we need not to misuse or to uh, in quotes um, be careless about their information uh, there are many ways that we can do that we collect data through captive portals using wall gardens and just maybe redirecting people to uh, local content hosted content or through hotspot systems where they buy vouchers ladies and gentlemen I, I want to say thank you very much for listening to me once again my name is Alfonso Diambo and I'll be happy and willing to support or to respond in any way questions concerns or areas of potential partnerships, growth and uh, support.